Today's video is sponsored by Wayfair. We have delivery of wood. We are starting in the bedrooms this week, which is so exciting. I have never done a nursery, so I knew we wanted to start today in the nursery. Now, this is our little baby's nursery. As you can see at the moment, it's painted light blue, and I just feel like we need to add some pink to this space because she is a little baby girl. She's so, so cute. And something else I wanna do in here is a little bit of molding, just because I wanna add accent to the wall. We're gonna be doing some wallpaper in here as well, which is going to add a bunch of visual detail. So I'm gonna tone it down with a little bit of boarding on the wall, and we're gonna paint that a solid color. So it's not like patterned wallpaper everywhere. But the first thing that we wanna do is actually remove these little baseboards that are on here. They're just like, not good, <laughs> not very cute. So we're gonna remove those and add our own. You wanna know something? I'm not good at demo, I'm good at DIY, but I'm not good at demoing things. So in terms of boards that I'm going to be using on the walls, we're doing a four inch board on the baseboard, three inch boards on the walls, and a two inch board on the top. And these are all pre-primed MDF. It's just the easiest to work with. So we're gonna measure. Okay, we need a 85. All right, we have our board cut to size and we're gonna just nail it right into the wall. I'm gonna find the middle of this wall here and then we're just gonna mark that for the center board. Beautiful. I've been doing some trim work in the other room for a while now and I really wanted to see the paint color in here because we're going to start painting in here as well. And I actually selected kind of a color that I'm hoping is gonna go with the furniture that I picked up for this space, but I'm pretty sure that it will. So the color is actually called Unfussy Beige, kind of a random name, and it's by Sherwin-Williams. We're gonna test this color out on the wall. Ooh, uh, it's like a pinkish tone. Let's see, okay. Pretty. It's like a pinkish toned taupey color, which I think is gonna add some nice warmth to this space. They really didn't like the blue in here. It just wasn't the vibe. And it's very, very cool toned. It's like a sky blue. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint this over the entire room, including the ceiling as well. What's nice about these doors is we don't have to... Oh, oh yeah, we do, just kidding. I'm in Jerome's office now and I'm a little scared once again for the paint color because I did something a little daring in this office. Now Jerome was like, you know what? I don't care what color you painted. I just want something calming. So I went with something extremely dark, um, which isn't what you think of when you think of calming, but I really think I can make this space still a really calming space because it's so bright in these rooms. Uh, I think we can get away with some dark tones. So I'm gonna see, this color is called Roycroft Bronze. 
The color itself is like a dark green. I think it kind of has a golden undertone to it, which I thought would be really pretty. So let's go ahead, see this. I love a dark office. Definitely a daring color, so. I think though, once we add the other elements, it's gonna be really, really fun. So I went through and did a good amount of the painting in here, but something I just wanted to share with you guys is that if you want a really custom paint look in your home, paint absolutely everything. Like I am painting the doors of the closets. These are like bifold doors, so I'm painting them. Also painting the door itself into the room. I feel like it just gives the room like one cohesive look and it doesn't break anything up, which really creates a nice kind of designer look without having to do too much. It's just paint. And so I'm gonna go through, I'm also painting the ceiling as well in here. The only thing I'm not painting is the window trim, just so we have a little contrast on the window. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Welcome to your pink bedroom. Oh, it's so pink. Oh my gosh. Okay, so, what do we do? <laughs> Why can't I ever pick the right pink for the first time? I swear this was, this wasn't my fault. This wasn't our fault. No. It was a swatch's fault. It was called unfussy beige. This is unfussy pink. This is literally light pink, but I think we should maybe, we should maybe remove the floor. Well, the thing is, I don't, it is way more pinker than we thought, but it's not a bad color. It's not bad, name. no, but it's, it's a like, it's a primary color. bedroom for a husband and wife. So it is like neutrally, but it, at the same time, it's, it kind of feels like it could be the baby's room. <laughs> I wanna see what it looks like, actually. It's giving dust. Well, definitely think it's prettier with the floor for sure. Next in this room, we're gonna be applying this really thin trim. It's like a half inch trim. I found this at Home Depot. And I'm gonna be applying this on these closet doors, uh, just on the outside of it into two panels to make them almost look like built in like Parisian closet doors, which I think it's gonna look really nice. And I really think Jennifer's gonna love that. And I simply cut the trim with a pair of miter shears, which makes it super quick and easy. Beautiful. Literally cutting this like Kendall cuts a cucumber. <laughs> like, what am I doing? <laughs> it stayed. <laughs> and what, should we just do two? Yes. <gasps> do one there. And then I'm holding this one here. One done. We have one of our frames complete. The primary bedroom has been painted and I am now working in the vanity area, but there's this little strange, what I believe is like a shower door separation between the bathroom and the vanity. So the vanity is actually inside the bedroom and I wanna make this more of like an open concept feeling. So I feel like the countertops can actually travel uh, from the vanity into the bathroom. And I think if we knock this out, we could do a really cool feature in space. So that's what I'm gonna try doing first is figuring out how to get this lovely Thing out. I could, don't know what it is. I really don't. It's top part of okay, the screws did nothing. Can't I just like push her through? Uh, uh. I cracked it. <laughs> um, okay, what do we do now? <laughs> it's giving pry bar. There we go. It, oh my gosh, it is a door, it has a hinge. Really? Oh, it's in the wall. So Should we leave it as a door and they can open and close it? Yeah, you can <laughs> open it. Honey, I need toilet paper. I think it's ripped out of the wall now. Oh, 
It's gone. Oh my gosh. It feels so we should much hang this open. as wall art. It feels so much more open. How does this thing come off? Oh, oh screws. screws. Get out. Hopefully this wasn't structural. <laughs> That's giving patchwork. Also, we should have. It's really cool. It's definitely like an architecture, like architectural feature it looks like. Yeah. So guys, now that this is out, the plans are to actually add shelving in here, which is going to make the bathroom a little bit more open concept in the terms of the shelving is gonna be right through the vanity area, but I feel like they share this room. It's only them. There is another bathroom and I feel like this is gonna be so cool. We're also gonna do a little towel rod at the bottom, which is going to have a hand towel on it, which is gonna add more privacy when you're like looking into the bathroom. And then we're just gonna do a little patching on this. And then we're gonna have the paint color or wallpaper, whatever I'm planning to do up here. I haven't decided yet. Flow from the vanity space into the bathroom space. And I also think we're gonna be doing a DIY on the countertops to make it flow from space to space as well. I just added a second coat of paint to these doors and they look so good with the trim on them. Definitely a lot more custom. And then over on these doors, which lead out of the room, we're just gonna put paint on these. And then right over here, we are going to be painting these doors as well. So the whole wall is gonna be like a wall of doors, but I wanted to mix it up with some trim. And then we're gonna add the same color all the way across so it looks more custom and kind of like all built into the space. Whenever I paint doors or cabinets, I actually use the roller that is specialty for doors and cabinets. It comes with a smaller nap on on it so it doesn't hold as much paint and it just goes on a little bit smoother. So always suggest doing that. And I think painting these kinds of doors and cabinets with a smaller roller is always easier. I just feel like you can't make as many errors if you use a smaller roller. The wallpaper just arrived for the nursery and I am so excited to hang this up. This is of course from Wayfair and I am going to be putting this on the top half of the board and batten wall that we did. And I wanna share with you guys how to pick a paint color because on the bottom half of our board and batten, we're gonna be painting that. And with the wallpaper, I always lay it out. And then I'm gonna grab a fan deck and just kind of start looking at color tones that would go. So I kind of pick within the wallpaper itself. We have some pink, kind of like an orange and a cream. And I think I wanna do something lighter in here, something more along the lines of a cream. So I'm just trying to find colors that go with the tone. This one's called Futon, which could be a good option. Are we allowed to paint her room Futon? <laughs> like, um, I think it's fine. I think it's pretty. This wallpaper is so cute for a little girl's room as well. It has little deer, it has squirrels, there's orange trees, owls, and flowers. And I just love the color tones in here. And with that paint color, I'm going to edge the top of the board and batten and also the ceiling line. And just so when we apply the wallpaper, we don't have to cut in with the paint. We're also gonna paint the ceiling as well. That way when we apply the wallpaper, the ceiling paint doesn't get on it if it was to be painted after. Just keep that in mind. I'm thinking like the editor right now, putting like music video edits on, <laughs> like transitioning and flipping and stuff. <laughs> it is time to hang up our wallpaper. And this is our first little panel here. This is just a peel and stick, which honestly, I would do a peel and stick in anyone's house over a real wallpaper. Cause it's just so much easier and it stays really nicely. But I'm just gonna start by peeling the back down. And I'm gonna go ahead and just overlap it one inch in the crease. That way we can fold it over and we have a continuation on this wall. Mm. There's our first piece. Love it. Uh, Let's look. Oh, it's so cute. I love it. It's busy, but like not ridiculous. It's know? like organic, but at the same time, it's symmetrical. So you have all these like, hopefully Julia likes it. We'll have to get her opinion. Yeah. <laughs> We're marking a line using this level here so that we could find a line for our wallpaper, the first piece, and then it will be straight throughout the whole room. Using this little edger and a blade just to remove the excess wallpaper. First piece is on and we are about to apply the second piece. All I do is just cut this one to the approximate size, overlap it a little bit, and just make sure that you really adhere it to the wall. And match up the back. 
and match up the pattern. That's the most important part. <laughs> That's called precisely positioned. Seamless. Seamless, if you will. Honestly, if you have two people, like you could do a whole room in peel and stick wallpaper in like an hour. We're using a straight edge and a blade to remove the extra. Did you see what I just did with that? Moved it while I did it. It was impressive. It was perfect. <laughs> That's such a tip. Watch this. Refreshing. That was the best thing. Satisfying. This one needs anchors. A little tip for your curtains is if you actually pull your last loop over, then hang it in the bracket, it's never gonna be able to be pulled and it covers your bracket. The curtains are the perfect length. We love when that happens. I'm like combing the curtains. It is wallpaper time in the primary bedroom, but this wallpaper is sadly not peel and stick. It is regular wallpaper, which we're gonna have to paste. It looks like this. I think it's really pretty. And we're gonna need to cut it though to the size of the wall. It's going in the bathroom area in our little vanity section. I already went ahead and measured and it's essentially the size of this table. So we're just gonna cut our pieces. For this wallpaper, we're applying the paste on the paper. I'm just going to tape this down because it rolls pretty well. So we want to keep that flat when we apply the adhesive. I've never seen what wallpaper adhesive looks like. I'm scared. Let's see. Oh, it's giving Elmer's. It's giving school glue. Ew. Kind of smells like school glue too. Give it a sniff. Yeah. Yeah. And then, using a roller, we're gonna be rollering our wallpaper glue onto the wallpaper. So then, per the instructions, we are supposed to fold this in half, adhesive sides together. Oh, we it fold over. it this way? I guess it doesn't matter. You yeah, can fold it either. I think folding it. Yeah, this way. This way, probably. Makes sense. Give it a smush. And it takes a nap for three minutes. <laughs> a little nappy. If anyone knows why you have to let this sit for three minutes, leave a comment. We have our wallpaper. It's been resting. Now she needs to wake up. <laughs> wake up. Smoothing tool. Okay, so we will need to do a little cut. Um, do we have that blade? <laughs> it honestly looks pretty with the fake marble countertop. <laughs> smooth it to make sure it's just all down and then it'll work. Yeah, oh, yeah. no, it dries like crazy. I'm loving the way this wallpaper's looking. Oh, looks so good, do you like it? Yeah, I yeah like it. it's really good. I was scared with the pink, it might be a little too girly, but I actually think this kind of tones it down a bit in a sense. I love that. It looks so good. And I kind of got the pivot too, because I thought if she's like doing her hair here or something, yeah. you can like pivot it towards and look at yourself if you're doing your makeup or whatever.
I'm now in the bathroom, one of two. This bathroom here is actually going to be the guest bathroom. And we've been primarily focusing on all of the bedrooms so far, but this bathroom needs some paint. As you can see, it's like a bright turquoise. We have a lovely little shower curtain here. And here are a couple of my paint swatches that I actually have been hanging up since we got here. And I've been leaning towards a soft green color. I really like this color here called Ancient Marble, but I will say that this house's lighting has been a little strange. So I'm gonna go one shade grayer, which is called Sedate Gray. and I hope that that's gonna give us still like a green tone in here, but not be overbearing. And I'm gonna do an eggshell finish on all the walls. And that should be our paint color in here. Doing some other fun little touches, which I'll share with you guys once we get to those, but let's get the paint on the walls. We're making a potion. a lot happening in the primary bedroom today. We have lights going up over here. We have Andy from Yoded here because we're doing concrete countertops or like concreta countertops, yeah? And we are going to be essentially troweling on this product here, which we already have mixed up over the top of the entire countertop to give it a new look. And you could virtually put this product on like anything, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> that is crazy. I've seen before after photos of full bathrooms being covered in this, like over the top of the tile, no demo necessary. So we're going to be putting this on the countertops. And this is my first time doing anything like this. So let's see how it goes. Okay, I'm gonna see how you do it first. Perfect. A little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of that, a little bit of this. Would I just go over the holes? Yeah. You can clean it out later. Great. I'm not as fast as Andy, but I'm doing my best. Would you say I'm doing- You're, you're good, man. I'm a professional. Yeah. Honestly, the coolest product I've ever used. <laughs> this is so cool. It's already changing the look of it. That was nice and messy of me. Don't worry about it. I'm gonna come on to this side. You do the hard part over there. Oh, is that the hard part? Yeah. No, I feel like you're doing the hard part, the upper. The first cup. I'm thinking here. Mm -hmm. Stud. Stud. Another thing that should happen sooner than later is putting all the outlet covers back on so we know what we need to get at the store because I know that we need more. We just go right there, that 
that should be. I will be raising this. <laughs> it's a really good one. Okay, here is the rug for the main bedroom. Now, because we did a little bit of a pinky tone on the wall, like a slight pinkish tone, I thought we could do a little bit more of a masculine rug in here just to mix the two vibes. And I found this great one um, that's just like a nice grid. I think it adds kind of this masculine touch to the space. And as you guys can see, the light is pretty low at the moment, which I'm going to adjust that, gonna raise it a bit. But before that, I just wanna test it to make sure that it works. And then we're gonna bring the bed in, which I am so excited. The bed is beautiful. So I think we're gonna need to flip it up. Yeah. Forward, like the headboard. That's what I was scared of. Can we just push it all the way back to the wall? Like that? Okay, that's this. And then we do have to add the slats in. Such a pretty bed. I just need this panel for back here. It, it's gonna just hold itself anyways. It is decorating day in the nursery and we are going to be laying down the rug, bringing in the crib and all of the accessories. So the first thing I wanna do is lay down the rug. I picked this one out because it's the Amber Lewis and Malloy line, which Wayfair has a ton of on their site, which I love. This collection is so pretty. And this one's the ocean and sand colorway, which I thought would just be a really nice look in here. And since everything's pretty new looking in terms of like the board and batten and you know our wallpaper, I really wanted something a bit vintage in here. And I feel like this gives it that tone. I'm also using a very large rug in the nursery because I feel like in a nursery, you're gonna wanna cover more floor space than less rug. I would rather have Julia on the rug than on the tile. So this is gonna be our rug. Also, if you fold back the ends, kind of makes it lay a lot nicer and flatter. Here she comes. She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. How do we do this? I forget. Ow! It just broke my fingers, I think. Oh. <laughs> also, if we did not have this window, because it only clears the window by like a quarter inch, I don't know what we would have done. Here, wait. <gasps> yep. First nursery. Now let's add all the other elements. It's kind of heavy, so I just have to... I've been waiting to rock in this chair, honestly. Oh my gosh. I feel like I just had a baby. <laughs> oh my gosh, this looks so good. I love it. <laughs>
these super cute sconces for in here. I loved how it was just like a white metal. I've never seen a white metal sconce before, so I'm gonna apply these. I thought it just adds a little bit of freshness and coordinates back with our board and batten here. And I'm just gonna be doing puck lights in these sconces, uh, so nothing too crazy. Not gonna hardwire them into the wall, just because that's intense. <gasps> that looks so cute. I love this. Let's add one to the other side. This bed color looks perfect with the wall. I knew I wanted to do some kind of like pine, more of an orangey wood, which I kind of stray from, but because this room had a green wall, I thought it would contrast so nicely and the colors would just pair really great. And guys, this is not just your average bed. I also got a trundle for this bed. So it basically can pull out into two twin beds, which I thought would be a lot nicer for this office space since Jerome wanted this to be a guest space, also where he works nine to five every single day. So it's gonna be a space that's utilized very often and I wanted to give them two additional bed spaces for guests because they have guests all the time. And this trundle will be perfect. It'll allow us to add an additional mattress underneath and then they can pull it out when they need to access it. So we're really utilizing all of the space here. All right, guys, how cool is this desk chair? I think it is so Fun. It's like a cherry wood on the arms and it has this olive green leather. And like Jerome mentioned that he really wanted a larger work area before he had a really small desk. So I thought, you know, getting him a nice chair, a larger surface so he could spread out all of his tasks for the day would be perfect. And this room pretty much has all the furniture in it. We're just doing the desk, the bed, of course it pulls out into a trundle. So there's a lot actually happening in such a small space. to hang the shower curtain rod in the guest bathroom. And I actually just got a brass curtain rod, just your traditional brass curtain rod. I wanna give this more of a custom look. I feel like I keep saying that, but it's really what I'm trying to do. And what I'm gonna do is actually mount this curtain rod with the hooks coming from the ceiling. So it looks a little bit more intentional. I also ended up removing the finials because I'm gonna have it kind of stretch from wall to wall. So So first thing you're gonna do is just mark your holes. Then we're gonna drill our holes. And you can add the anchors if you need to, but I just hit a stud, so I'm just gonna screw this straight into the ceiling. I'm gonna repeat the same process to the other side and then we can add our rod. And then we're just going to put our rod up like this. Oh my gosh. I installed this one backwards. Now we're gonna add a mirror to this bathroom. And I know Jen and Jerome love the boho aesthetic, so I thought we could add some boho elements in just kind of more of a funky, different way. Like I feel like this mirror, it screams boho, but it's not one that you see a lot of people use. So I feel like it's more of a funky, just fun play on the bohemian style. I love the fringe, I love it with the green. Um, and then we're gonna add some border trim as well, which is just going to kind of intensify the space. I found this really cute wood trim at the hardware store. It kind of has like a checkerboard box look to it. And so I'm going to be applying this just at the top of our tile here because the tile's really unfinished. And I thought this would just give a nice little finished top edge. And then the molding actually cascades into nothing. So it really looks finished. And I'm just gonna apply that with my brad nailer. 
I'm at the edge of this trim piece, which will just slide right in there and finish off that corner. And I just feel like their tile is actually cute in here. It has some texture to it. It's like a nice nude peachy tone. <laughs> Now that our countertops are nice and dry, I'm going to test our paint color for the vanities, which I have right here. It's called Woodcliffe Lake, which is a really pretty color name. And it's kind of like a grayish, like a grayish brown beige tone, but it's definitely a lot darker than our countertops. And I think it's gonna be the perfect base for this vanity section. For the furniture placement in the bedrooms, I did two large nightstands on either side of the bed, and the bed is a queen size. It looks kind of small on camera, but they did say that they just wanted to stick with queen size, and I added a bench at the end of the bed, this tree that I found on Wayfair, and a pot as well from Wayfair, and then these lamps. I actually found these at the thrift store a while back for $5 each, and I just love the texture that they have. I kept the styling in the primary bedroom pretty minimal just because I really wanted the elements that we added to shine and the color of the room to shine. I also wanted the vanity space in the room to shine. There were a lot of focal points I really wanted them to look at when they walked into the space. The bed being one, the light fixture, the vanity, and I just feel like all these little elements really just enhanced our design. In the office, I ended up styling the bed to look more like a sofa, so I used a bunch of throw pillows in different random colors and textures on the backside of the bed, and I just feel like this gives so much visual interest to the space. And then above that, I did three pieces of framed art, and the night before, I actually hung up those sconces that you see on the wall there. And of course, our last space is Julia's Nursery, which I loved styling this space so much. I had so much fun mixing the pattern from the curtain with all of our textiles and the wallpaper and just incorporating whimsy colors and tones just totally rounds out this nursery. I cannot believe how far we've come in 10 days. Tomorrow is the reveal and we still have no sofa. Thanks so much to Wayfair for sponsoring this video.